my name is Melissa Bragg and I'm going to be presenting the seven continuums. So the seven continuums are um, questions that theorists ask that are related to human behavior and personality. So they're kind of arguments um, about how human behavior and personality work. So the first continuum is going to be free will versus determinism. So free will in this argument is the belief that our instinctual forces and childhood experiences do not shape our lives. So what happened to us in the past does not shape who we are now. Um, determinism is the belief that people do not have free will and we don't have control of our behaviors or personalities. So, our, so this would mean that determinism means that our instincts, um, hereditary factors, and childhood experiences shape who we are. So where I fall in this argument is that both free will and determinism contribute to how an individual consci consciously directs the course of their actions. So that means that childhood experiences do contribute to a part of who we are and our personality now, but we also have free will to change who we are. Um, so the theorist that supports this belief is Jung. So he recognized individuals free will and the idea that childhood experiences determine some aspects of personality. He believed that personality is determined by what we strive to be in the future and what has happened to us in the past, such as childhood experiences. Um, another thing is he believes that our personalities can grow and develop as we work on them and throughout time. The second continuum that I'm going to discuss is nature versus nurture. So the argument of nature versus nurture is discussing certain aspects of how people behave. So how people behave are due to genetic factors, which is nature, or environmental factors and social factors, which is nurture. So while researching the argument, I found that both nature and nurture both contribute towards an individual's personality and how a person behaves. So a theorist that supports this argument would be Gordon Alport. His outlook on nature versus nurture is that nature contributes to personality through hereditary aspects such as physique, intelligence, and temperament, and nurture contributes towards personality with environmental and social influences. So neither nature or nurture can individually be responsible for all be human behavior. Um, so the third continuum that I'm going to discuss is dependent versus independent of childhood. Okay, so the next continuum I'm going to discuss is about whether human nature is unique or universal. So human nature being unique means that we are completely individual with our actions. So human nature being universal means that we have patterns of behavior that people have accepted across our culture that we universally use. So I found that each person is unique biologically so we can all have unique personalities as we use our free will to create a unique lifestyle. Um, a theorist that I very much disagree with would be Carl Jung. Jung or Jung or Jung, sorry. Um, I talked about him in the second continuum. His view is that people are only unique for half of their life. He believes that uniqueness disappears as we progress into middle, middle age and develop a more universal kind of personality. Um, I can see where the idea comes from, I just don't agree with it. I, I like Alfred Adler's stance on human nature because he focuses more on the uniqueness of each person. Um, so Adler believed that our personalities are unique because we have unique social environments. We all come from a different place a different social network. Um, I also like Gordon Alport's view of uniqueness. He believed that uniqueness is defined through an individual's traits and that our genetic background can contribute towards our uniqueness. Um, as I said before, we're all biologically unique. Um, I completely agree with this because he recognizes that we are all biologically unique and then Adler acknowledged that we are all socially unique. Another argument in psychology, which is our next continuum, is about our life goals and what motivates us. So the argument is, are we motivated by growth or satisfaction? 
I found that some theorists believe that people are motivated by growth and to complete challenges, while other theorists believe that human behavior is based on the satisfaction of our needs. Um, the theorists that I found that have the strongest evidence discuss how growth motivates us more. According to Schultz, we are motivated to grow and develop, to improve and extend ourselves, which is in a direct quote. A theorist that supports this position is Gordon Alport, who believed that motivation is conscious and that what we want is what we strive for. He also discusses how completing challenges in life actually motivates us to continue to complete additional challenges in order to grow. A theorist that believed the opposite would be Sigmund Freud. He believed that instincts are responsible for motivating people to behave in certain ways. He considers instincts to be a form of energy and forces of personality that drive people to do the things to meet their needs. So Sigmund, Sigmund Freud believes that our life goal is to satisfy our needs while Gordon Alport believes that what motivates us is what we strive for and growth. The next continuum that I'm going to go over is about how theorists look at life. So it's the outlook. It's either a pessimistic view or an optimistic view. So a theorist with a pessimistic view would be Sigmund Freud. He had a pessimistic view because he felt that our instincts and our childhood experiences had complete control over us and that we had no free will to control our own happiness. So some theorists with an optimistic view are Alfred Elder and Carl Jung. The outlook on human behavior that I see as most beneficial is optimistic view. So Sigmund Freud would be a pessimistic view that I don't really agree with. So in this approach to human behavior, he believed that our instincts and childhood had control over us and that we don't have free will to control ourselves. I do not agree with this view because um, people have free will and self-control to not act on instincts at all times. So I see as Abraham, Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers, are, they have more humanistic approaches. Uh, their theories consider that people have power to stop themselves from doing things and they can take steps to better themselves. A more optimistic approach that I believe is Maslow's belief that people can choose to grow and develop their personalities even if we have needs that need to be met. I believe in an optimistic approach because I've seen so many people take control of their lives and benefit themselves by taking steps to make their lives better. So I don't see Freud's pessimistic approach as accurate. Freud's pessimistic approach is really interesting because he discussed how uh, we build up tension and our motivation in life is to reduce that tension, which I do agree that life does have struggles that cause tension and we want to reduce them, but I don't think that completely controls our life. So the last continuum that I'm going to discuss, which is the seventh, is more of a cultural argument. Um, so the argument of individualism versus collectivism is about whether we should focus on ourselves and our goals individually, or if we should view our lives collectively that focuses more on the family as a whole. So the United States is more of an individualistic culture. Different cultures value different things, so I don't think either are bad. I think that for me and for the United States, individualism is more beneficial. So for America, individualism is a lot more common. I do think this can differ for every culture and family. And that for me personally, individualism seems to be a lot more beneficial than collectivism because in my family, when I was living with my family more collectivistically, uh, I was kind of codependent and just dependent all around on my family. When I moved out, I was able to complete a lot more goals. So according to the textbook, individualistic cultures are more self-sufficient and positive self-regard is more important. On the other hand, Albert Bandura discusses collectivistic families as more open to communication 
more truthful and less likely to be addicted to substances, which I found really interesting because um, the United States does have a really big um, drug and alcohol problem. I don't know how that compares to other countries. I'm sure that all countries struggle with it, but it would be really interesting to see more research on collectivistic countries versus individualistic countries when it comes to um, managing addiction. So that is my opinion on that argument and that wraps it up. So um, thank you for watching.